Good day, Mr. Bryson Gray. How are you? I'm doing amazing. How about you? I'm do- I'm feeling it today. It's nice out. It was uh, hot and humid the last couple of days. I went outside, get a little sun in my eyes in the morning. Nice and in mid seventies. I was feeling. It was feeling pretty good. Yeah, I've been. Uh, I've been just training boxing, hurting myself. So you yeah, know. I saw you. How's your shoulder? <laughs> Is your shoulder? Uh, <laughs> this morning, but I only did. Um, we did mostly just uh, training work, PT work to make sure that my shoulder wasn't super messed up. So hopefully it's not. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. What What is your um? It's It's funny you mentioned that. Uh, so I got into for me, I got into well, somebody challenged to box me and I accepted it. And then they backed out. Um, but I've kept the training for weight loss. Um, that's what's kind of motivated me. That's actually pretty fun. Like getting hit in the head isn't super fun, but the rest of it is fun. What, uh, what made you start doing that? Or is it something that you always did? Um, so I used to watch boxing, but I don't know, like eight to nine months ago, I got, I became sort of like obsessed with it. Like, like I'm obsessed with chess. I like things that make you think. And when I realized boxing, is not just fighting. It's like, it's really a science too. I became obsessed. And then I was like, nah, I want to box. So, uh, so, so so I started, I thought I started training it. I've been training, um, literally been training ever since. And uh, I plan to do a few, I plan to do a few bouts. I plan to do a few exhibitions. Yeah. 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 I plan to do some. What about getting in with like, Chenk Uger or something like that. Like uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so something like that. I, I, I'll, bo- I'll, bo- I'll box a liberal, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, if uh, yeah, for, for me, I'll say this. Like, um, I've, I've, I've been doing it for. I mean, I actually went out and trained with Sam Hyde. And, oh uh, snap! Yeah, it was like a huge secret, and then one of his employees let it slip, and then the guy who, um who I was supposed to fight backed out immediately. He's like, Oh crap. He thought, he thought I wasn't training, but I was now I'm only doing one a day, which is kind of weak tit, but I was doing two a days and I was flying out there and getting punched in the head by a maniac. And then, uh, the day he found out about that, suddenly his, his daughter was sick or something like that. I don't know if his kid's really sick. That's cool. Like be a dad. Um, but, uh, it, it's still fun. And it gives you this, uh, it gives you like an air of confidence too when you're out. Yeah. Like uh, for me, taking punches. So, you know, like I didn't have much combat in my life. Pretty, you know, pretty like suburban kid. But the, um, there was one time I was at a convention and uh, a gaming convention and some lunatic Antifa guy uh, attacked, like literally attacked me uh, from behind, like a true hero. And I remember like, at that moment, I was like, oh, shit, man. Like, that's, come on, dude. <laughs> so now yeah. that, I, you know, I learned even just some of the basics. Like, okay, I feel a little bit better about somebody, you know, I don't ever want to take it there. But, you know, if I have to, I feel just way more confident. Like, okay. Yeah. E- even Bruce Lee said, if you know how to box, you can learn good grappling. If you learn grappling and boxing, he's every professional says you'll win 99% of street fights if you get into it. Of course, we don't want to get into street fights, yeah. but if you happen to get into it, if you know how to like box, like actually box and know how to grapple, it, it, it'd it be rare you lose to a normal person. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. And generally, I'm not going to be starting any fights with anyone who appears to be a, a seasoned MMA fighter or <laughs> a boxer or anything. So like, um, it's just, yeah, it's it's been wild. And so uh, just so everyone knows, you know, I'm joined here. This will be uploaded to YouTube later with uh, Bryson Gray, certified hit maker, several <laughs> number you. one, several number one uh, hits on the Apple iTunes chart and just had a song pass a million streams on Pandora. Yeah, I, I just found it out uh, because I had a, you know, in music, you get paid hopefully every week from whatever site you release your music on. And yeah. I had got a check that looked just a little bit too like bigger than t- than usual. Yeah. Like, what the crap is happening? So, so I saw you. I, I did some research and found out that I, that I, that my song "Feminine Out Feminist" had a million streams on Pandora. I said, "Goodness gracious!" So yeah, yeah, cool. that one is the the uh, uh, aggressively anti LG. No, no, that's a. I read a couple articles getting ready for the stream, <laughs> and there was a lot of like 
Wokey's uh, writing about. I th- not that song. It was um, uh, which one? Reclaim the was, Rainbow. Not Reclaim the Rainbow. It was uh, uh, oh the Eminem diss track one. Oh, like Eminem. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think that that's uh, one thing. Like lyrically, I I always enjoy is well one one of the things I enjoy most in life is like dunking on hypocrisy. It just feels so good all the time. Yeah. And yeah. like Eminem's a perfect example. Like you go back to his first couple of records, like he's going a hard bundle of sticks words. He's talking about like just wild, wild stuff. Way, way worse than what I like. <laughs> I don't even curse and and I don't even talk about like hurting them in my music. Eminem took it to new heights. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I remember that record because like everybody had it when I was young. I'm a little bit older than you, but the um when I was but young, no- everybody What's that? You talking about the song, the song "Criminal"? Yeah, every, well, Eminem was like so huge when that when that that was early in his career. Yep. Um, and uh, I remember hearing those lyrics. And then I'm like, even then, I was like, dang, that's kind of like that's. Oh, I was I was an Eminem fanatic growing up, so I like I I love that I I love the like that he gave me that I don't really care, and I always felt like hip hop was like the I like hip hop. I mean hip hop. What is that? I always <laughs> felt like hip hop is like the like epitome of free speech you know what i'm saying yeah like you know you say what you want and that's why i, I like eminem that's why i like people like dms growing up that's why i like pop because rappers are just like i'm gonna say it <laughs> yeah that's that's true if you go back like a lot of those guys um y- you know th- their lyrics are raw as hell like uh you don't get that lyrically now in mainstream it still exists not a mainstream got, though yeah but you gotta it's what do you think of this is my opinion of mainstream music and you know better than me uh you know as an expert in a garage band for six years uh <laughs> i'd like to i like to analyze the music industry but even in like the stuff with aldine that popped off a little while ago and you know country music people always thought oh country music's like uh yeah yeah good old boy no it's actually woke like most of most of this stuff it's my belief that these people are like hand picked and because a lot of people can sing. And so it's like, Oh, do you have the right politics? Okay. I mean, it's like, I, I don't listen to a lot of um, hip hop nowadays. I guess Russ, I like, I don't know. And uh, there's a couple, I like more like, um, I don't like songs that sing about like uh, women and money. Like that. Yeah, that's yeah. not like, I like songs about the struggle or about o- overcoming stuff like that. Not like, Oh, I've I spent all this money. Look at my money. Like it's the most low brow, like low IQ message or song. Yeah. Or drugs. Very low you know? IQ. I don't, I don't even listen to a lot of I don't, I stopped listening to secular music in 2020. Um, but even before then, you could really tell everything going woke, everything's felt handpicked. But people being handpicked isn't the various of fact. And um a, a big one that a lot of people don't know about is the Nicki Minaj and Cardi B thing. Um, I don't know about that. Cardi, Cardi, Cardi B, her her team were, were paying radio stations and paying DJs to act for an opinion to say she's better than Nicki Minaj. You know what uh, I'm saying? Like, yeah. And, 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 yeah. So so Nicki Minaj stopped getting a lot of radio play when Cardi B came out because they were giving out the money uh, to make sure that she got on the same level. And she doesn't. She claims to write her own lyrics now, but she definitely wasn't writing I her d- own lyrics. Or I don't buy that. Yeah, I don't buy yeah. many of these. Even by the way, even. Not just in rap or hip hop, but in almost everything in mainstream, the lyrics are so sterile that, like, even I, I'm a I like um, indie rock and like folk rock. That's kind of I love what indie I, rock and alternative. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at, and the lyrics are still, you know, kind of hard. Like, I go to shows and there's like 40 people there, you know, and I'm like, yeah, okay, this is you know, this is good. But you, even you, that, you, you listen to Passion Pit. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I, like I love yeah. Passion Pit, bro. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> yeah, I saw them at a uh, music festival in Atlanta. You watched them before? Knees. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, the Shaky Knees is a really cool festival for indie rock. It's um, it's back when like, you know, it, I mean, it's just like there's like ten stages and you're literally all day. Just it's stressful because like, okay, crap, and then you have to make some decisions. You're like, mm, right? yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm uh, the first time I ever saw TV on the radio was there, and then I had to like choose between them and like Modest Mouse or something. Like, there was like some uh trade off, and I was like, oh, I'll go to half of this one, and yeah. I'll, I gotta run the other side. 
but yeah, that's always, that's always interesting to me. And the other thing, you know, speaking of hypocrisy, I don't remember which one of it is, which one of them it is, but nobody seems to have a problem with, uh, is it Cardi or Minaj that like openly admits to drugging and robbing people? Cardi B. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's cool. You know, like yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> that, that was the entire point of my light Eminem song. Like I literally made it and I said it in the song. The point of me making it was quite literally to prove the hypocrisy. And it came true. That song got banned on Spotify. Yeah. Um. So like it came true. But you can still still at this exact moment. Go listen to Criminal by Eminem or or rap guy by Eminem where he literally said he's going to break the, a table over the head of LGBT people. Yeah. <laughs> or like even the stuff he said about, you know, in his early music about his about his baby's mama. Like literally said, fantasizing. Oh. I mean like the really song Kim? Yeah. Oh, like come that. on, bro. You know, but yeah. but me an independent person that don't curse um my song like Eminem got banned. Like that that's that's just that is hilarious actually to me. Yeah, well, it's because he's like, a, you know, suddenly he became anti-Trump and then suddenly nobody cared anything yep. anymore. And it's like um, the, the um, and I want to remind people, um, all of Bryson's links are in the description. If you're watching this back later on YouTube, his YouTube, his Twitter and his Instagram are all linked down there. I highly recommend. Obviously, many of the people who will watch this already know who you are. Um, we, we have a crossover, you know, audience for sure. Um, yes, sir. The, you know, I think it's... um. When you got into music, I'm, you know, I'm not going to ask the dumb question, like, where do you get your inspiration? Because, you know, I'm yeah. not, I'm not, how do you write your songs? I'm not doing that. Um, but like when you, were you always into hip hop or did you, or rap, or did you start in a different genre? And then follow up question. It seems like with rap, a lot of people are influenced by, there's a lot of local localization to rap. Like Houston's got its own sound. Atlanta's got its own sound. And then it's even small. It can get even smaller to where it's like, you know, Baltimore, different areas of Baltimore have different kind of rap vibes. Was there any, but was there that kind of vibe where you were at starting out or were you just taking inspiration from stuff you liked already? And then just kind of just saying, all right, I'm going to just do this. So I've been rapping literally all of my life. And I'm not saying that like an exaggerating in, in the womb. Way. Like I'm talking about, like I literally like as far as I can remember my life, I know I was rapping at four, and I don't remember before four. So I may have okay. started rapping at four. I genuinely don't know. That's that's how long I've been rapping. I won rapper of the year in fifth grade, eighth grade, well, like, most likely to be successful in high school. Oh uh -huh, like, yeah, okay. So I've been doing it for a long time, and I I actually got um fairly not fairly really popular uh where I'm from in North Carolina. I had, I had songs in movies. I had a song about McDonald's that went viral before YouTube even existed. Uh, yeah, with my rap yeah. group, we had songs on the radio. Like I, I, I didn't even have a real job until I was 21 because I made money from music all all of my life. Yeah. Uh, but then Press, that, pressing your own CDs and selling them at shows and it's it, it was shows. CDs yeah. was in high school, but that wasn't real money. When we when we got the we had a number one song on radio in North Carolina, and we were getting paid like two thousand dollars a show. It was four people in the group. We were splitting oh, it. Right, we would get like three or four shows a month. You know what I'm saying? So it was good, no reason yeah. for me. Yeah, and I was living with my parents making two thousand dollars a month. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I thought I was I thought I was living it up. Yeah, you know? that's like a million dollars now. I mean like uh <laughs> when you're young, you, yeah. I rem yeah, I remember that. Like I got my first I think I got a uh, raise at my first job when I was like eighteen. I was making like I was repairing computers and I was making eighteen dollars an hour. And I was like, oh I why am I gonna go to college? This is all the money I'm ever gonna need. It, it, yes. <laughs> The, the, the thing, the, the thing I realized though, I had to learn quick. In my old rap group, I used to make secular music. I used to make the same music I'm against now, uh, which is why I'm so much against it because I know the effect it has on children. But I was in a rap group called Three Three Six Boys, um, and a lot of our history is on the internet. Um, and uh, the area we, code. Yeah, Three Three Six is the area code we're from, um, and yeah. we're actually probably, as far as rappers, Three Three Six Boys may have been the most popular rap act from high point north carolina where i'm from easily okay uh, other cool. than fantasia fantasia is not a rapper though she's a singer um mm -hmm. but we were we were it like a lot of people looked up to us like we were going to make it and we stopped getting played on the radio that money stopped and uh i had to, i remember i worked at ups and i was so angry <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> just hating life yeah yeah i, I, I was <laughs> like bro i was supposed to be because i had performed all the top artists like and now i'm working at ups i thought it was crazy but um i actually uh 
quit rap for a while and completely switched genres in like 2015. I, be I became obsessed with EDM. Oh, okay, uh, but I started yeah. making EDM under a moniker called King Vodka. And uh, <laughs> that was a viral. very EDM name. Yeah. And I went viral <laughs> doing that. Um, I, I, I was able to quit a job. I was making, I was doing, I was doing a job at Fiberglass. I started making like 2,300 a month. I had a song called Stranger that went viral on Vine. Um, and, and an app called Musically. If anybody doesn't know what Musically is, it's TikTok now, but it was called Musically. Yeah, Music.ly or whatever it was. Right? Yep, yep, yeah. yep. And uh, yeah, uh, I had a song called Stranger. I think right right now, King Vaca still probably gets like twenty thousand monthly listeners on Spotify. I just haven't released nothing since twenty sixteen. That's solid though. Yeah, that's <laughs> wild. Yeah, the, uh, and I, yeah. And I started back rapping. Got another song on radio where I'm at solo, and um, I don't know. Then I just started feeling super convicted because I used to preach about God while making secular music, like about getting drunk and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And um, I, I had I had to put an end to that. So this is this is uh, I, I bust out. This is my very first album ever that I did. Oh snap! And like I, it's it's the only copy in existence now. <laughs> I I had a the website was at a we because you know back then you you had to have a website this was like during myspace era so it was like the free 50 it was like one of those websites that give you free like yeah. 50 megs and then like this the sticker this is like ms paint uh and then just on a sticker and then a cdr the uh Bro, i the, miss myspace days oh, did you um, it was actually the best dude it was you used to get to put your music on there like your bro your top, it was the best why does nobody else do that bro, why doesn't do, facebook do that or, do, or uh whoever do you know what 106 and Park is? No, I don't. 106 and Park was a popular hip hop show growing up on BET. And uh, I remember my rap group, we were so popular locally, we would get like 1,500 plays a day on MySpace. Which people, that sounds like a lot That's now. That's a ton. That's a that ton. That was crazy yeah. to us. Yeah. And that got BET to contact us. They wanted us to be on their Wild Out Wednesday show. So we went oh, on there man. one Wild Out Wednesday and we started getting. Five to ten thousand views a day on MySpace. Man, I thought we were. I thought I was. I thought it was over, bro. Yeah, right. I'm, Back the truck up. Give me limo. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. I'm good. But I thought. I, I thought. It, I thought it was a wrap, man. I had so many almost moments in my life. It's, it's so interesting. But um, yeah, bro, I've, I've been rapping so long. I used to write for people. Um, I used to, I used to write for tons of people. People. I used to produce for tons of people. Also, um, where I'm from. That can be a good gig uh, for people too. You know, people forget about all the people that go, like producers, uh, people that write songs. Like they can have a pretty good living if you're good at it. Like, um, yeah, you know, you make a lot of money and you get royalties, and you know, you you can be set. Yeah, I, I used to make more money. Um, like before we started getting super viral, I was actually more known as a producer where I'm from, and I used to make probably like five hundred dollars a week producing, bro. And yeah. uh, people used to pay me to write there pop artist songs and stuff like that after the, after they see me going viral with my EDM music um you you can make good money it's just it's just everything in music is just it goes like this man yeah yeah i think that it, it's an interesting time in music now where you know there's no barrier anymore back when back you know, and again like i i'm not obviously on your level but i remember when i was trying to make it in a band it was like um there was this website called BYOFL, which was stood for book your own effing life. And then that's how we would book our shows. And they were always uh, basement shows, but like in the, we would play like a, we would play with punk rockers. We were not punk rock, but we were more like indie alternative. And so yeah. like, that's, that's who we would. So we always played uh, basement shows. And back then it was like, oh man, like I, one time we got our song on the radio and we had, um, we had a radio station here that played indie music and that was like, Oh my God, this is it. Okay. Well, any minute now, it wasn't it? it's going to be like, yeah, it's going to be like Wayne's world. I'm going to be, there's some Mr. Big in the back of the limo here. He's going to hear my song and then, our, and call us up. Well, that never happened, but now it's, it's the business is so different. I mean, yes, labels still exist, but I mean, I I've seen you've been on a few different labels. Are you on one right now? Or are you independent now? No, I've been independent for a while. Um, I, I was with Empire. Empire is huge now for for rappers. Uh, but I was with Empire when they first started coming. Out. I think I think my rap group was the first people outside of the West Coast actually signed to Empire because okay. we were so pop. We were so popular. We were from, and everybody in the industry was talking about us. Um, and then and then we signed a deal with a, a big record label called E One, 
Um, but that was just like a single deal. <clears throat> I signed a few single deals in my life, but for the most part, I've been for the most part, I've been independent 100 percent Also, I'm dropping what's funny is I'm dropping an indie, I wouldn't call it indie rock. I'll say indie rock, but you know how it's the more pop version of that style. Mm-hmm. I'm dropping yeah. an album like that later this year, which is hilarious. That'll be good. There's actually a lot of crossover in that scene that you see at the <laughs> festival, you know, like um, like I mentioned earlier, TV on the radio or um what is the name of the band that uh, the lead singer is? Um, she's almost like a soul singer. Um, but they're at they're always at indie festivals too, and they're really good. Um, Chad will probably bail me out and tell me who it is, but um, she's uh their lead singer is like a a, a black woman, and uh, they're like soul indie or like kind of like you know like um I don't know. There's it, that that the crossover for people that like rap also. Will like I mean like I still like Wu Tang I still have thirty six chambers yeah. on tape you know like I think that you know that there's there's still like you know international crossover so that yeah, should be this, interesting. This album is not gonna be rap at all though like I'm not rapping at all. It's it's okay. uh, it's, it's it's literally just me singing and uh cause I like the style of um any people I like I like it because it's like I don't Alabama know Shakes wanna... is the name of that band. Sorry. Oh okay, yeah. I need to look that up. But uh, yeah, like when well, I listen to like the indie alt music that I like, it's like a it's like they like quadruple up their vocals and they got like this effect on it. It just sounds so like, you know what I'm saying? I I I just I just I just you love like it. I, yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah, and I, I use, yeah. I used to make it, but I didn't know how to put my belief systems in it at first. But um I started working on the album and I was like, just just be more creative and for more blunt. I'm just so used to being so blunt. <laughs> what do you think about the conspiracy theory that um the band uh Oh my god, why can't I think of it right now? Uh <laughs> the the band The Killers are actually a Christian band. Have you ever heard about this? I've never heard about that conspiracy theory, no. So like if you look at you know the lyrics for something like Mr. Brightside or some of their other songs, like if you go down that rabbit hole, it's uh it's pretty it's pretty interesting. I used to go to um faith-based uh like shows there was one like an hour away from my house it was the first music festival i ever went to i remember there was like a band called um five iron frenzy skillet um and they just heard of skillet recently my my, my, my trainer my my boxing coach told me about them they're kind of like uh pop punk from 2000s um but they were all like christian bands or christian lyric bands and i remember at that time i was like oh this this is actually pretty big. Like it was packed. And, uh, you know, that scene, I think with everything going on in the world right now, I think I, I predict a rise in, in wholesome music and wholesome content for, for people. That's, that's just, people want that now. People are afraid to consume uh, anything now because it's like crap. Like what's weird woke indoctrination in here? Or, you know, people saying like WAP is a good song. You hear like 12 year old, you see 12 year old girls, like, twerking to wop it's like this is demonic like Bro, this is not good music influences people if people like it or not that is scientific that is that 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 is standing stone in psychology um and i think the issue with the at least the christian hip-hop scene i didn't even know it existed i, I didn't even know who lecrae was until like three years ago yeah and um when i started trying to hear it in my opinion it sounded like sort of like less quality than secular music mm-hmm. and i think the reason why stuff like feminine not feminist or something i saw like homemakers the reason why that go viral because if you just heard it if i just changed the words you'll think it's something on the radio you know what i'm saying yeah yeah but, your stuff is very well produced and i think that's you. a valid point i think that you when you you have to <clears throat> i don't know if it's that well the money it's just money like the the money's not behind it as much as it is with like brain rot music. Um, and that's a, that's an interesting um, topic to discuss too, is that, you know, f- for me, music has always been, you know, I'm 40 and I'm still going to shows, basement shows, I actually, you know, and um, it was, it's always weird when you talk about in particular in the eighties, it was like heavy metal mm-hmm. uh, <clears throat> being like Republicans, you know, they, that's the whole era of the 80s and 90s of the um parental warning on cds and tapes and um you know devil music and all this kind of stuff 
now rock is kind of been defeated i mean like name a popular rock band that isn't like sold out weak you know like there is no metallica there is like rock music is dead and like boy bands killed it if you really get real conspiracy theory i believe that <laughs> during the grunge rock era in the 90s when you had bands like soundgarden nirvana um all a tool all these um huge death tones they were all just massively popular and uh, nine inch nails corn and then like uh boy bands just appeared <laughs> and the radio stopped playing rock music and it was like in sync it was i, I felt coordinated to me like some weird i you know shadowy organizations that now nah, we're gonna just do we're just gonna do pop or uh boy band music now um but anyway where i was going was uh when it's specifically with rap and the black community this is a conversation that is that happens and it's like a touchy issue um but i just feel like it's the one um lyrically like when you when when you glorify banging or going out on the st and, and having you know promiscuity and all this stuff i mean the I, people just were re no no it doesn't influence people it's like bro like of course it does of of course it like I look at the stuff that gets glorified and I'm like, well, it's no wonder like these kids don't even have a chance. Like they're well, just, all the role models are, are, you know, not excellent people. Well, it's, it, this, this is an objective fact, right? That, that, that this uh, rap music influences people. And I'm going to use New York, Chicago and um, London. Uh, just, just as an example, statistically speaking, the, the, the scene of drill rap. And if anybody don't know what drill rap yeah. is, first off, drill is just means I'm going to kill my the rival gang. That's what a drill is. And they a genre started in Chicago called drill music, where it's basically it's, it's music killing music. This is what it is. The difference between this and the regular killing music hip hop that you're used to is in drill music, they talk about real people that are dead. They talk about yeah. real rival gang members. They say their names on songs. They talk about they explain the killings to you in the songs. And I'm not joking. I know a lot of y'all probably thinking, "What the crap?" No, no, this is dead for real. And it, it got popularized in Chicago. And if you ask anybody, any of them gang members, they will tell you the music made the war worse because uh, you're yeah. mocking my friend that y'all just killed. You're mocking him on a song. So now I got to go kill your friend and then mock him on a song and it goes back and forth. Now the statistics come in when it went to the UK. It went to the UK before it went to New York. And anybody can go Google this right now if you want to. Stabbings in the UK were on the rise and they attributed it to the rise in, of drill music in London. Next, you go to New York. They tried to ban drill music because the murder rate started rising. This and they is in uh, the early nineties. Is it now? Is now drill music got popular in 2012, 2013. Oh shoot! Okay, okay, okay. I've heard of it before. Chief Keith, um, Chief Chief <clears throat> Keith sort of popularized it. Um, oh, and okay. you got a lot yeah. of people that that you know who little little Dirk is. Yep. Yeah. So so little Dirk is actually attributed with starting the. Um, BD GD war in Chicago that started getting crazy around 2012. Um, and, and a lot of them started, you know, this dissing dead people on songs. Like that used to be, a lot no, of songs that used popular. to be, uh, you couldn't do that, right? Like there used to be some, some lines there. Like you didn't, yeah. you didn't go after people who are dead or their families. Now it's in, it's in the, it's in the lyrics and nobody cares. There's no Bro, respect anymore. It's funny when, um, he, he got something popular called smoking Tuka. And people thought it was actually talking about like marijuana. No, Tuka is a real 16 year old kid that was in a rival gang from Chief Keith that their gang killed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And and when you say smoking is a name behind it, the whole point is to mock the dead person. And I remember it got so popular that regular people started like saying like smoking Tuka when they were smoking like marijuana. And um, uh. that rival gang started like, getting angry at them because like, this is my friend. Y'all are sitting here mocking. And, uh, it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's evil, bro. It is pure demonic. Um, and a lot of people don't even understand it. That's why people on TikTok they're seeing these lyrics and don't even know what they're saying. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it's, it's weird that like, um, this type of music is still getting, 
not to get too conspiratorial, but I am on Rumble now. So, but it, it it's just like why like certain songs. There's lots of great music. There's lots of great rap music. That you know, at one point it was MTV, then it was uh, radio stations or well, radio stations and MTV. Now it's streaming services. Like, if they really cared about people, it's like. You already know, I already fully believe that algorithmically whatever music is getting put, promoted is is predetermined. Like it's not, you know, I remember when Pandora came out, I've been a member like since they were in beta, 20 years maybe. I was like, this is so awesome. I'm discovering all this new music that I never heard before. It doesn't really do that for me anymore now. It kind of just pushes the same kind of music to me um, all the time. And I don't know if less indie bands are putting their music on there or what, what the situation is. But it's um, it's it's good to see, I guess, in a roundabout way, that you know your success, and also you know, kind of a, a clear rise in this type of content, like um, traditional values. And when I say that, I don't even necessarily mean conservative. I just mean like people who want to be good people and who don't want to like, I uh, I don't know, take part in this system that is like like designed to pull us apart and tear us apart or for profit because that's the most profitable way. Well, you, know, our, you can't go ahead. Yeah. Our rise in this like traditional style music is 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 a good thing but it's bad at the same time because that is 100% organic. The reason why it's bad is because a lot of people don't even know why Spotify started. And Spotify started really to give labels more control over the music you get. Uh I'm somebody that had a song called Stranger that was going viral before uh Spotify. I'm um, not not before Spotify, before Apple Music came out. And uh oh, we we're making good money on on I- iTunes because people had to buy it. And you can't control somebody spending a dollar and some change. Yeah. When Apple Music dropped, I will tell y'all this I promise you, I had to get a job two months later after Apple Music release. And the reason why is because Apple Music and Spotify people get new music by what's recommended by the platforms and what's pushed on these playlists. And you have to be a part of a record label or have connections to get on any of these playlists. Yep. So it is it is predetermined as you said. One of the one of the most annoying things I found about Spotify is it killed the album. One of my one of my favorite talents of like musicians and even when I played music, we did like I think we have four full lengths and a couple of EPs. It, it there's an art to the album, right? Talk like about it. when when you have like it's got to be like 10 to 11 tracks to me is like kind of perfect. That's my vision. And it's got to have a flow from yes. the beginning to the end. And it's got to have an emotion and a feel and an experience, right? That's why I like vinyl so much because it, it like incentivizes not skipping around. You're supposed to listen to it. it. There was a point where you're supposed to listen to it from track one to track 12 and, and be like, start it over. You know, like I want to yes. experience that again. But now people get paid on length of time that stuff streams. So now you have people like Post Malone releasing freaking 20 track records so they can fluff up their stream time. And there's no art to it anymore. They're just putting whatever on there. And um, like, if you go back to some of those, like, you know, you remember like, um, if you look at Wu-Tang's 36 Chambers, it had a lot of songs on it. But like all the time they took to have all the samples and the cut and the cutouts and all this um and and uh i think first like um the weezer's blue album is uh very a very good example it took 10 tracks and it, it's like 35 minutes long and it's like damn okay i want to listen to that again or um you know indie bands still i think do a good job of this but um i think i i, I blame spotify for for killing bro, that vibe of records i tell my followers when i drop albums i'm like bro i, be, I was like bro i put a lot of work in to the track list yeah I brought it down to a sign. I literally have a pool of like 10 people. I'd be like, what's the best flow that you think? I, I, I like to, I like my albums to tell a story sort of as you go. And I also my father was like, please, because because that's an art. Like I like, I sort of tap, I sort of take a little bit of you know pride in how I pit my albums together from track one. I don't care how long the album is, I, I pit it together and I have it like this for a reason to tell a story. Yeah. Don't hop around, man. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, they're in order for a reason. I think that um, I don't know if you still do this, but you know, if I don't think I don't know if this is something people do too. But back when I would record, it, we, the car test was a big deal too. Like, yes. get, put that record in, put the CD in your car, and 
drive. Just drive. And see how bro. it feels. Yeah. Yes. And it was oh like goodness. that would reveal so much about the the vibe you're feeling and and the order of the tracks that like by you like would take notes. Like all three of us would pile in the car and we would listen to our own record and then just figure out, okay, no, that, nah, you know, track four to five, it doesn't feel right. Yeah. Sometimes you would even trash a song at that point, right? Like you'd say, I, uh, you know what, this album, this song doesn't even fit on this record. Let's take it off. Maybe put it in the EP or something later. And, um, that just seems like, a, uh, a, a, yeah, it's a sad, and that's what this stream time did yeah, to, uh, to musicians. I, I love that you just said that because I just did my car test two days yeah. ago. It was me and my fiance. It was late night. I made sure it was super late. Um, and we just was just started just started riding. We played it. We, we listened to it. it. Was like, okay, does this fit after this? We got it all figured out. My dad, I sent everything to him, and he's in North Carolina. He got in the car and did it. I, I do a car test, a computer test, and an AirPod test. And that's how I figure out, um, you know, how, how I feel about it. Yeah, well, maybe that has something to do with why you uh, have had a few uh, number one songs. You know, maybe it's because <laughs> you put that, that you know, that that care and attention that is so clearly missing from mainstream music. It's so formulaic. I even start to distrust, you know, like the other thing is like, where are the bands that have been together for 10 years? That's not even a thing anymore. It's, oh. like, it, it's like, oh, it's a super group. Uh, you know, I mean, you look at like, you know, in the pop punk scene, sure. Blink-182 has been forever, but they're basically like zombie Blink-182 now. They tour whenever they need money. The records are not very good. Um, but that's a band that started 20 years ago. Now, any of these new bands, I notice it's like their debut album and it's already being played on the radio. Like that stuff never happened. Yeah. That stuff never happened in the eighties and nineties. You weren't putting out your first record and being played on the radio that never that's all that's all the fingers in the, yep. the string pulling you know you gotta and, grow, you gotta you gotta grow into it when, before my friend, my song got on the radio we had to create a local buzz first around the high schools uh we had songs and movies it was on one of us in part even after one of us in part they didn't put our stuff straight on the radio bro we had to get a song to start getting played in the clubs where i'm from and then the radio started playing it, and then they put it in regular rotation, and then it went number one. There's no process now. These people just get everything handed to them. Yeah, I think that they're just handpicked by the record. Like, bands are too pretty now. They're all good-looking. There's no, like, greaseball, fat guy, <laughs> yeah. bass players anymore. Like, that. that's just – they're all beautiful people. And, like, look, playing guitar <laughs> – there's uh, – even Radiohead has, has a song about it. But, like – Really, almost anyone can learn guitar. It's not that difficult. And you're talking about these um, in music for the 2000s. What was really popular was uh, the T, like uh, chord progression. You yeah. just make a T, and then that's still popular to this day. But like, you if you could play, if you just learn how to play the T, and you just move it around on a guitar. You can write pop songs. And then like, all these bands now are. I mean, one of the bands I really was into was Pine Grove. They were like a new, they were kind of like, they were kind of, um, I don't know. They're just like feel good indie music. Um, and I remember they were touring and then he came out. They were just about to blow up. They, they had released, they had it on their second album. The first show I went to had like 45 people. And then the second show I went to was like 5,000 people. Ooh. And then the, the band, the lead singer of the band, canceled himself uh for sleeping with groupies and i was like what like he broke up the band and just disappeared because um like one woman came out and said oh, i went backstage and we hooked up or whatever and i was like this guy's probably not a musician not that that's behavior you would condone but i mean traditionally like i mean look at like freaking uh you know it used to be a thing to brag about for musicians. Not that it's yeah, good. People, yeah. People used to brag yeah. about it all the time. I mean, I mean, like I said, my rap group, we used to brag about it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just, a th but like, I, to me, I was like, what in the hell? What? You're just b b destroying the band because you slept with a girl? Like, what's happening? And I think it just occurred to me that I'm like, oh, they were never really a band. Like a band would, pers you know, a band wouldn't just, br or what um, they did to, um, uh, what is that? Uh, I think they're an Irish band. And like, their guitar player was like against the lockdowns and they just kicked him out of the band. 
that oh, stuff, yeah. the stuff I went through with my band, like there's no way, like there's, if you're together in a band and you're actually a group and you, that stuff would never break up. You would never kick somebody out of your group for not wanting, uh, um, forced lockdowns. And then yep. he's out of the industry. He's completely gone blackballed. And it's like, Oh, it's because the band is artificial. Like it's just the industry says we can just replace you with someone Hand else. Pit, no, yeah. nothing genuine. These then people have never been through anything together. And uh, I mean that's that's what music is now. Mu- music music is so everything is so fake. And that's that's why I, I be that's what my whole goal is like to burn the music industry down, including Christian hip hop. That industry is so fake too. Everybody's just fake. Everything is fake. Yeah, they. I mean, I remember like maxing out credit cards with my bandmates and, and getting jobs at Burger King so we could buy uh, a four track. And I remember <laughs> most people, I don't know if these were still around when you were coming. I'm sure they were, but like we had a guitar center and Sweetwater and all these places had credit cards that they would give and you, they didn't care if you had any kind of credit. So like all of us were applying, you know, planning to get credit cards so we could get a four track, which at that time was a card you put. It was it was a card yeah. that you put in your PC and then you ran it out to the interface. It wasn't like the four tracks that record on an SD card or something. It recorded directly to computer. So I was like, "This is great!" And we had Cakewalk, the software. We had all Cakewalk. I remember yeah. Cakewalk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it was, it was because I couldn't afford uh, what's the expense Pro, Pro, Pro Tools. So I'm like, "Well, we're just a garage band anyway." I'm like, "I don't need. We don't need five million plugins. We just need to have three good Sure SM58s mm-hmm. and uh, like an interface." so we can use more than one mic on the drums. That was the biggest deal. That's what made our first record better than all the other records around is that we used two mics on the drums because most people, because we had dip, we had the ability to use four tracks. So we would record live, but I remember all going through all that stuff. I couldn't imagine like, oh, bro, you tweeted something, band over. <laughs> like, oh, oh yeah. That nah. never would have happened. Nah. Nah. So, my, 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 stayed, my, my rap group, the reason we sort of broke up because I kept, turning down like um deals and and they had a different mindset like me i grew up with both my parents and i feel like that's what it has an effect on how you view life so i so it was like to me when, when i hear a record deal for twenty thirty thousand dollars i'm thinking like nah that's not that, that, that's not what we need but everybody else in the group they're thinking thirty thousand dollars i can't believe it and then yeah. um you know, because, because we all still friends, but that everybody was like, okay, let's just go our own separate ways and everybody do what they uh, do what they want to do. And that was well, after like psh, 10, 12 years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, it's like um, another Wayne's World reference when they got paid $5,000 or something like that and they completely sold out. Um, 30 hit yeah, now, like when you're a little bit more of an old head, it's like 30K. Okay. Well, that's 10 grand each and it's only five grand after taxes. Yeah, like and we were already we doing. Yeah. We were already making like fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars per member in the group from shows, yeah. and I'm like, y'all don't, y'all not thinking correctly. We can make whatever they offering us. It's just not gonna be at one time. But you know, we young. The money we was getting, yeah. we was spending it like buku. So you know, it's just it's it, it, it's a mindset thing. But I've always been like a person. Like I've always done research. I've always been like, is this the right thing to do? So I just wasn't falling for it. And I'm glad. I'm yeah. glad I didn't. Oh man, so many. <laughs> Music and, and, and fighting are two spaces, boxing, like especially oh, yeah. in the 80s, where like people just get just completely used and abused. You look at, you read some of those stories about, you know, boxers that are just yep. dead broke and have brain damage and ever like Don King, like yep. ruined people's lives for a career. And people like um, look at him as like a kind of a goofy, funny guy. No, that guy is an actual demon monster. Like he used and abused men um and basically left them nothing and with brain damage and uh and same in music you know maybe instead of brain damage it's addiction i don't know but they it's, would use it, and abuse people and then they just throw you out and replace then, you then they throw you out bro and a lot of people don't realize it because they see these people i want to be like this person but then you don't hear about that person seven years later and now you see that person on drugs or something or drunk or something from all that addiction with no with no money left and boxing is it's so jacked up because these people are actually going out there getting hit in the face for a living, yeah. getting hit in their head for a living, and then to screw them over, and some of them screw themselves over. Sure, you know what I'm saying yeah. like Mike Tyson was making so much money, and to, you know, and he pretty much 
He made a lot of bad decisions. He made a lot of bad decisions. Yeah. But a lot of them do get a lot of them do get screwed over, man. And they going out there and putting their life on the line every day. Yeah, it's uh it's 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 interesting that one of the things that seems so logical to me, uh it, it, that the, these industries don't do both music and fighting is protecting your assets. Like, look, just look at like um, in the last couple of years when you had X um, get killed and then you had um, uh, another, uh, um, oh, I actually really liked his music too. He owed deed, I think, um, you know, a couple of big profile mainstream rappers. Like, no, you can't put a freaking, uh, person on their ass 24 7 and say nah dude you're not going back to the hood for cred you're not gonna be you know drinking purple drink and codeine nah dude you're worth two like they don't protect these guys you know why, it's, right? it's weird no i don't so i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna tell you why and i'm gonna use the most one of the most recent ones king vine oh juice world is the other one i was thinking of yeah juice world too i, I yeah. use him so i extrapolate it but with king vine demon rapper <clears throat> he actually killed probably like 12 people but um yeah. He was popular, right? He was like on the come up. So he was on his way up. You know what I'm saying? He 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 started getting popular. Music started going pretty viral. Um, and then he died. One thing he never had though was a top five album. When he died, that next release though, top five album. So oh, in yeah. reality, these labels, Juice World, the amount of money he made since being dead is more than what he made when he was alive. So these labels, I don't I don't think they mind. When the people die, because they, I think they're about to release another Juice World album, and he's been dead for a couple of years now. King Von just released an album; he's been dead for a couple of years now. So, I, so I, wild. I, so a lot of people to these labels actually, I don't think they, I don't think they really care. <clears throat> You're probably yeah. Chat saying, chat was saying too, they're worth more dead than alive, and I guess, yep. Like, I guess that's sometimes I don't want to take my mind there, but you're probably right. It's, um, it's sad. <laughs> yeah, it's. It's uh, it's weird, you know. It's like all these, you know, even um, even in rock, um, they couldn't get what's her name any help. Um, what's her name? Uh, she was a very famous. Uh, she got real thin. She was on heroin, I think. And she died. I think I'm years about. And they're still like releasing stuff from from her. And yep. I'm like, dude, you couldn't get this woman help, like. But I guess, uh, if <laughs> yeah, if they're if they're saying like, oh, just let her, you know, clearly be uh have a amy winehouse thank you chat and why yeah, like, but, but i'm not gonna lie I, i've been around a lot of like top artists and i don't want to put everything on the label because the, these artists do it to themselves uh and you can tell the difference between artists that don't and do like when i met 50 cent he's one of the most coherent people i've met you know what i'm saying very nice very good but he doesn't smoke a drink yeah you know what i'm saying so 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 yeah. he doesn't you, you can't pit him in a situation I've been to one industry party in San Francisco and I, I'm good on ever going back. These people doing coke. To be fair, they do that crap at a lot of conservative events too. But uh, uh -huh. doing, yes, yeah, yes, they, I agree. Yeah, <laughs> these people I heard doing in these uh, industry events doing all kinds of drugs, and I, I just felt so uncomfortable because I never, I never did drugs. So I'm like, oh heck no. Um, so a lot of these artists pit on themselves, man. They they get obsessed with the lifestyle. Yeah, that's true. That's true. There's personal personal responsibility is a thing. Uh, you know what? I'm going to pick on that little anecdote here because it's something I've talked about before and most people are too afraid to mention it, but I've been to, I'm, you know, I'm not, I won't have to, I'm not going to name any of them, but I've been to a lot of these conservative conventions. It's just as degenerate as a liberal It is one. the most I'm degenerate. You. And a lot of my followers wonder why I stopped going to a lot of these events. Yes. <laughs> and, and I'm going to tell y'all why. First off, these influencers... Even if they have like twenty thousand followers, they just act so arrogant, and I just and I, and I don't understand it, right? And um, and they're all degenerate. They go around looking for people to have sex with. They're yep. doing drugs. They're doing yep. like, I don't know if y'all. I view cocaine as a hard drug because I never did drugs, but they is. are doing co cocaine. They drunk, dress like, dress like the same people that they talk bad about. Every one of the uh, bro, half of these women conservative influencers. You could mistake them for being in a Cardi B, a Cardi B music video. When you, when you see when you see them at nighttime at these events, it's no place kids should be. Um, Dude. so 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 yeah. Sorry, yeah. I'm just I was I'll get all excited because it's like it's rare that someone else will like. I stopped going because I I I didn't want to. I I got sick of seeing how many husbands were cheating or wives were cheating on their spouses. Oh, yeah, I, I was like literally. 
I just, I'd be like, dude, bro, I just watched your, you just tweeted God is king and you just did a line and you're cheating on your wife. Like that happened. All these people are so phony. And then the ego is, I've never been like that. Like I would go to these things. I just, I, you know, I make time for everybody. I don't care if, you know, whatever. I just make time for everyone. I don't go into the VIP area. I just chill. And, um, some of these influencers, especially Twitter personalities, are walking around there like they're an anointed one. I'm oh like, oh my goodness, bro, man. who are you? Who are bro, you? No one it, cares who you are. Like, <laughs> like literally, and, then, and then you know what's funny? I be seeing because everybody that's ever seen me at an event, they know I never say no to pictures because, yep, I mean, either. Why not? Why, why, why would it make no sense? But a lot of these other influencers we have, I'm telling you, it'd be like 40, 50,000 followers. We're like, I'm tired of taking pictures. You taking three pictures in two days. Yeah. Bro, these people are so full of it. And a lot of these people are some of the most popular people online, too. And it's like, oh, man, y'all are so arrogant. Like, like, bro, like, it's not like, you know, 99% of us aren't rich. You know right. what I'm saying? We're, we're yep. only popular in these, 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 niche spaces you know what i'm saying for, for the most part it's like you have no reason to act like in i don't i don't know bro these events be like killing me because i'm like these people are crazy and they always trying to impress the more popular influencer all day long too yeah it's um it's really i i used to go to them and i saw too much and i sometimes i get on twitter man i just burn bridges because it it, it makes it's fun for me to be like, sometimes I just get so sick of someone tweeting hypocrisy, this and that, like, oh, oh, abortion is the worst thing, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, girl, you had two of them. Like, I, you know, like, or stuff like that. Like, I just can't with that. And um, I had to stop going. And then um, you go to some of these big ones, like TPUSA, the stuff Bro. you're going to see there is, is degeneracy bro. like the girls are sleeping with the they're all cheating on their spouses they're it, doing drugs they're getting hammered let me, let me tell you something i i got invited to an event they they tried to say i was gonna perform at this event right it was a party at the party it was during the tpusa event so it's not it wasn't related to tpusa per se but yeah yeah you know adjacent and, yeah and um they invited me they put me on a flyer without telling me and i was like bro well, oh, luckily nice. i'm not like a real like douchebag so i'm like bro whatever so i went and i'm at the door because first off i'm not going anywhere without my firearm so if i can't go then i'll go back to my hotel room but when i got in there they were trying to figure out if i could get in like how i wanted to get in and this was during the time where every conservative made a video about wop bro uh-huh do, you know, uh -huh. do you know the music i'm hearing at this club Oh, the same Bro, stuff. WAP, they played WAP twice. All these conservatives, and I'm looking inside, like, whoa! And I'm oh, like, yeah. I just watched you make a video, bro. And it was so disgusting. I, I looked at my fiance. I said, you know I'm about to leave, right? Yeah. But, oh, here you go. I'm like, bro, this is the most <laughs> hypocrite thing. What, what business would I have in here? These drunk as a scum people playing music that I preach against, and I'm disgusted. So I I I I walk away back to my hotel. I say, y'all people crazy. Yeah, that's uh, it's it's a it's a wild um, it's good to hear you say that. I mean, we haven't ever talked before, but um, that's why I stopped going. And it's it's um, it is legitimately. I'm not like you know, looking for props or anything from people, but it it is career limiting to to not let stuff like that slide. There are. I've talked about this before. There are like DM groups with conservative influencers and they all retweet. I used to be in them. And like, you know, you call them, you say one thing, you go against them, they stop retweeting you. They stop. It's so high school and it's so, um, it's just lame, man. I'm too old for that stuff. Like, I, I don't care about, it's just, look, you want to party. Like I, I have, you know, I have looser beliefs about, than you, like in terms of, I don't really care if people getting drunk or whatever. But what I care about is when you're on Twitter the next day being like, just got out of the gym. Oh, yeah, I feel great. Man, man you're on your fourth Adderall. I seen you take them. You weren't at the gym. And like, uh, and it's like, uh, it it turned me off so much to that that lifestyle. It's probably just like, you know, when you get in, in it's like industry party. Like you said, it's, it's an industry party. 
and you get in there and you're like, oh, these people are no better than than it. now. I'm not saying everyone, okay? There are definitely some people out there that are who they say they are, but in my experience, that, that's rare, by the way. That's yeah, right. I'm saying in my experience. Ah, I mean, I've seen conservative influencer men bring dates who I know are married. Like, I'm just like, what bro. are you doing, man? I'm going to take, like, bro, I could just, one picture, man. One picture. Bro, and, like, I, I, I've seen it. And it's funny because a lot of these people that preach, that claim to preach the same thing I preach online, they call me too uptight. And I'm like, I'm not uptight because I don't want to be around this, bro. I preach against yeah. this every day on Twitter. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like bro, like, I'm not joking. I don't want to be around. And, and it's, it's, I don't know, these events get real, get, get real interesting because, because I don't even like being exposed to too much stuff that, that really ain't my business. And I do see yes. a lot of cheating and stuff like that. I'm like, I don't even like being exposed. I don't, I don't want to see this, bro, because I, I don't, I don't know what y'all got going on. And then when I be seeing this stuff, I, I like, I, me, I always, I always walk away. I go, I'll go to my room. And I, I, I'll just chill, or I'll just find somebody specifically to hang out with. I'm like, let's go do something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And because these events, bro, they, they 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 get crazy. You know? Yeah, I usually would. I would go, and I would end up leaving, and I'd like there'd be like a, a few people there. Like, uh, uh, I'll just say like Sydney is a real one. She she practices what she preaches, and I'm like, oh, Sid, do you want to like go to this other? She doesn't drink, but like, I'm like, do you want to? Just- go to somewhere else and we grab like some other people and just leave. Cause it's just like, um, it, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. It's wild. And you know, it's not my job to be out in these people. Like people, whenever I say this stuff, people are like name names. I'm like, I'm not trying to destroy anyone's life. That's not my place, but it seems like the people, well, there's a lot of phonies. That's all I'll say. You know, you meet me in real life. I guarantee I'm to you. You're going to say two things. You're way taller than I thought you were. <laughs> and oh, you're just like you are on your videos. Like oh, I'm yeah, the same I, dude yeah. on or off. I get that. I get that all the time. Matter of fact, people think I'm more blunt because they, they think I won't be blunt in real life. So they, they just mistake me. You know what I'm saying? But in real life, I am very blunt. Like it's just it's just what it is. Um, you know, another thing about another thing about these events, I don't want to the reason I'm not out nobody either, because it's really it's truly it's truly not my place. And, and to and, and to be quite frank, um, I think a lot of times you can clearly tell. Uh, but a lot of y'all ignore clear, a lot of people ignore clear, clear signs, uh, because they just like that person. And yep. I mean, I'm already controversial as it is. I suppose this person who's going to believe it anyway, I'm going to be the bad guy anyway. So, you know, I don't really care. I don't really care enough to do it, but, um, yeah, that, that's why people don't see me at a lot of events. So a lot of my followers, they always ask why I'm not here, why I'm not there. Uh, this is the real reason why I graduated high school in 2009. Um, and you're done with it. I'm done with I'm done. I'm done with high school. Yeah. And that's what a lot of these events feel like. Uh and and I'm and I'm and I'm uh and, and, and I'm good on that. Well, I just want to remind people I'm here with uh Bryson Gray, uh with several number what you have a record coming out later this year, you said. Um, but what else? Um, you know, all of his links are in the description, his YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. But where do you want people to go listen to your music? Where is the best way for them to check you out musically? Um, the game is what the game is. So still Spotify, even though some of my yeah. music get banned on there. Still Apple Music, even though some of my music get banned on there. YouTube. Uh, I'm actually releasing an album the last week, the last Friday of every month for the for the rest of the year. They're an EPs, album? though. They're oh, EPs. Okay. EPs. So 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 seven seven song EPs with different themes. Because when I do my albums, I love diversity. I mean, not diversity, yeah. but versatility. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> diversity, diversity in like its actual definition, right? Yeah, like yeah, diversity yeah, yeah. of music. You yeah, know, yeah. Like, I, yeah. I like different sounds, uh, yeah. but I want to do something different. So I'm releasing EPs with like themes. Like I'm releasing an EP on the 25th called Bible Rap, and it's like biblical music, but every song is hype, like straight okay. gym music, seven songs straight. And then I'm gonna release like something more melodic. Then I'm gonna release something. That's indie. Then I'm really something that's R and B. So for, I'm really some like themed EPs, uh, for the for the rest of the year. Did you um? Do you have a studio in your house, or do you go to still go to one? Yeah, it's right here. So this is like my share mic right here. I have a Newman, an Apollo twin, uh, uh compressor, and a, and another PC beside me. So it's like a two PC setup. 
Nice. Yeah, that's um I'm thinking in my head like uh that's like 30 tracks, 30 tracks that need to be edited. <laughs> yeah, tracks that need to be yeah, uh, like you'd be living in the in the studio for sure. But that the whole nah, I mean, that's, that's, I, I sit here, I edit videos, I, I try I'm trying to get back to making content based videos like about news and stuff, but I'm con- sort of consumed with the music currently. Um I sit here and do Bible studies. Like I sit in this chair for probably like 10 hours a day. What um can I ask? And by the way, thank you for uh giving me your time here today and um appreciate you. What um was there a specific this this is probably a cringe entry level question, but I, I'm still interested. What happened, something clearly did in your life that made you switch from non secular music to secular music? So um if people actually can find some of my sec my last few secular albums. I would try to mix in my faith. Oh, I mean, just, secular to non-secular. Yeah. I, I think I used I, them wrong. Yeah. That you good. I, I was trying to mix in my faith with the secular music, and I had ways of justifying it in my mind. Uh, but at, at the time, like, like my last secular album was probably 20, what, 17? You hear me talk about God. You hear me talk about me being celibate, but I'm cursing while I'm doing it. I'm cursing while I'm talking about the Bible, I'm, and I'm still talking about making out random girls. You know, and... um. <clears throat> I was justifying trying to have one foot in, one foot out. And then I read a Bible verse, uh, Proverbs 17, 15, and said you can't justify wickedness. And that pretty much, um, that oh, pretty spoke much to you like that. spoke yeah. to me. And not, not only that, um, the reason I started mixing in the politics into it is because the radio had stopped playing. Cause remember I had a song on the radio in 2017 in North Carolina called slow down. And, uh, I was like, you know, sort of, Telling you, I, I I sort of rock with Trump right now. I like what he's saying, yeah. and a, a lot of people wasn't having it. So I started getting blackballed. Uh, a lot of people in my city felt like I was a traitor because I was somebody who was known where I'm from, but I was supporting conservative values, and I was talking about my faith a lot, getting more heavy and stuff like that. Just make me do it more. So I don't even know why people, you know, <laughs> yeah, then, that's just human nature. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, why would it be? I mean, I totally can you know see that and understand that. My question is like, why? Well, I know this is something that I don't understand. Like I, you know, plead ignorance. Obviously, uh, I, I am not black. You may be yeah. surprised to know that. But the this is a unique. I, I don't know if it's in, it's not in the white community, but it is definitely in the black community where like there's a your like your blackness gets questioned based on. Oh. I, I see how they do. Um, oh, what's his name from California? Um, Larry Elder, I, yeah. I see how they do that guy, his own community. Um, and uh, it's it's wild because there are lots and lots of black folks with traditional values, like well, it's most just that they don't vote conservative. Yeah, it's, if you actually talk to people, yeah, like talk to like a black person, you'll be like, we don't rock with a lot of stuff that's going on, right? That's why you don't see a lot of like normal black people having pronouns. Like it's just not a only on Twitter you see that stuff, but um. But where I'm from is it, different because, like, all the HBCUs, I performed at them. You know what I'm oh, saying? Okay. I'm yeah. on the biggest hip-hop radio station. So I was, like, sort of known, especially for, like, music artists in my city. I was some my, – me and my rap group, we was, like, the people to look to. And so I, so people just felt like like supporting Trump or supporting Republican is just is frowned upon, period. Yeah. And um, I remember when the word started going around that my music wasn't going to get played no more. I remember my mama called. She hates when I tell this story, but I always got to tell it because because it was one of them moments. My mama called me. She was like, "Uh, you can't be a music artist and a political commentator at the same time." She said, "Don't throw your career away for something so stupid. It ain't making you no money." And in my mind, I was like, "I'm not doing this for Trump. I'm doing this yeah. because of my. I can't say what I believe. I can't say I believe. I agree with him on on, on, on immigrate. I can't say that." So I went home and made a song called "Black Not Democrat." Same freaking night and i said i said i said man screw this music i don't even make out with random girls anymore i shouldn't even be rapping about that anyway i don't even yeah. get drunk anymore i i, I, don't, I shouldn't be about it anyway. and then it just it just lit a fire under me bro because people were telling me something i couldn't do and uh it's so i liberating, had liberating right yeah so i had and now now you know what i'm saying everybody look at the vice documentary my parent my parents love it and now my mama don't like democrats my daddy don't like democrats all my siblings voted uh voted republican i don't know if they're gonna do it this time because trump got kind of a little bit cringe in my opinion yeah, but he did. um yeah. but they all all my siblings voted for trump 
in 2020. So, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I feel so uh, uh, vindicated. <laughs> yeah. And you know, your mama was just trying to look out for you. Oh, you know, yes. so she, yeah, yeah. Me and my so, parents have a great relationship. She was just, she just thought I was throwing what I've been working on all my life, throwing it away. And, she, and from her eyes, it looked like I was throwing it away for Trump. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, and she traditionally would have been 100% correct. Oh, it, yeah. It, like uh, the kind of the, mega rap or even just kind of the hey i don't hate trump genre of music i mean even um who is it Nicki minaj or uh even one of them was like had her little based couple of i'm tweets a republican and, voting for mitt romney well that was, yeah. that was one of her rap songs <laughs> yeah fucking mitt romney man jesus <laughs> the uh but yeah i mean she had she was like tweeting out some stuff about inflation and all this yeah. stuff i'm like okay so you know, you know, you know, but you just won't. You know yeah, what, what I mean? Like you won't. It's different say. now. Now when I yeah. go back to the city, go to the soul food restaurants, they like Bryson was right. So like now is that now it's a little different. Now everybody that used to hate on me be like, he was right, he was right, he was right. Um, but that's that's because they had to live through you know, years the last Biden week. will do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Biden is the best thing to happen to Donald Trump, and he don't even know it. Um but um, so, so I mean, it, it it is crazy how you get treated. I mean, I was at my one of my grandpa's funerals, bro. My grandpa, my grandpa died. Matter of fact, um, he died. His birthday is actually around this time. Today's my big brother's birthday. But um, Shout my out. grandpa happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday, my brother Jimmy. You know, so I, I got to call him after this. But um, my grandpa had died. We went to the funeral, man, and like I could just tell. I'm in the psychology. So I can sense people keep talking about me because I had I went viral by this time, and the family know. After the funeral, my cousin walked up to me and was like. I don't care what the rest of the family say about you. You steal my cousin. And I'm like, so you just, con so, so you just confirmed that y'all been talking about me during the yeah. day on funeral. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, um, I'm looking forward to a time, a, a return of where people do not identify with politi politics. One of the things I try to tell my viewers and I use, the vehicle of talking about pop culture, but really I try to mix in some wisdom to that. What I try to tell people is like, at the end of the day, these people don't care about you. So why are you blowing up your family, blowing up Thanksgiving or Christmas over this crap? Like just, we need a return to the, you know, where I'm from at the bars, there's two rules, no politics, no religion. And like, it's just like, uh, you know, you may disagree with the second one, but it's just like that simple set of rules for me is like, can we just go back to not worrying about who everyone voted for? And and like, I don't care. I mean, I've got a lot of love for the Don, but he's screwed up a lot. Like he didn't, I've been very vocal about, you know, him, I'm going to get section 230. I'm going to get these, these social media companies. He didn't care until he got banned. He He had four years. Now, granted, you know, everybody was against him and it was, very difficult anything done but I, I just try to get people to like work about think about yourself and work on yourself and um find peace with yourself and don't let these uh politicians literally rot your brain uh and you can't get away from it right you, you're like oh politics on tv i i happen to watch this um uh I, i've been re-watching old tv shows because it's like i watch married with children and I was like, ah, no on the nose social commentary. I turn on it. Um, my mother in law recommends to me this show uh, called like American Housewife. It, it's something or whatever. She's like, it's really funny. You like it. I start watching it. It is funny. And then, like, literally in the first episode, the entire storyline is a fat, homophobic woman moves in across the street. And she has to, she kisses another woman in front of her to get her to move out. I'm like, I'm out. I'm out. I, I just, you can be funny without having to, you can be entertaining without this stuff all the time. You, you know what's funny? I didn't even realize, and this is one thing I had to learn the hard way. I didn't even realize the magnitude at how crazy people was at politics. I had sort of expected it because when I first went viral, it was when we were wearing a big MAGA hat. And a lot of people like miss my interviews, but when I wore the big MAGA hat, I purposely, Wore a Team Jesus shirt yeah. when I was. I didn't even want to go to the rally. I wore the big MAGA hat to sort of bully the people in my area, thinking they could punk me or something. Like, yeah, right. 
like I didn't make some of y'all run it, for it me. It was like an like, act of defiance. It yeah, really, yeah, it really was. Yeah, even yeah, like it, for a lot of people, for, yeah. for a black dude to wear it, it's like, it's yeah. Triple. So, <laughs> like, so yeah. my, my homie Osiga, who I met, he was like, Come to this rally. And I was like, That sounds boring. Everybody are going to like it. I don't really want to go to a Trump rally. That's not even why I wear it. It's like, Man, yeah. they'll love it. They'll love it. So he finally got me to go. And I said, I wear my Team Jesus shirt, though, because I don't want nobody to mistake me for somebody that's like, that, that idolized somebody. It didn't yeah. work. People still feel like I idolized Trump anyway. So it didn't really work. But that's when I realized, like, yo, people take this some of this stuff, like, people take some of this stuff, like, too far to the point where, like, nobody can criticize anybody without getting called some type of name. And I was like, woo, I probably contributed to that a little bit, I feel like. And I was like, dang, I had to learn that the hard way. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely did, too, over the years. And that's why I'm trying to, like, mix in a little bit more of the, like, Hey, be strong in your convictions, but like, you know, I, I like, I, I will like purposely not dunk on like some of these dumb, like w blue haired feminist people anymore. Cause I'm like, these people aren't real. You don't see them in real life. Like they, they're, they exist online. And so you think this, these like, you know, uh, weirdos are everywhere. I've almost never run in and the one I did run into assaulted me. But other than that, <laughs> like I don't I don't see these people in real life. They they exist online and then people it like infects their brain and then they turn on the TV and they see it and they turn on the music and they see it or hear it. And it's like uh you know, I I I'm looking forward to hopefully after this election cycle, hopefully people can get back worrying about themselves and, and personal responsibility and and uh not trying to ruin people's life because they voted for trump like that was a I, wild time man what 2016 I, was wild i think right now it's more wild i'm gonna tell you why right yeah. this is why like i had to like because i pretty much created the genre of maga rap yeah, but I like i had to make to i had to make it a point like like let people know like i've always called myself a christian conservative artist i wanted to let, let it be known and I had to make it a point to sort of separate myself more lately because of how crazy a lot of these Trump supporters are, to be to be quite frank. Yep. But I don't think it's gonna go back to normal. And I'm gonna it might, but I'm gonna tell you my issue. Not only the left versus right thing, I feel like that's like natural. People with different core values going back and forth. But mm -hmm. if you look at the right, like this whole DeSantis versus Trump, like the no disrespect, but it's a cult versus a cult. It's very and, bad. Yeah. And the stuff they do to each other, bro, is is like. Like I don't even I don't even like follow a lot of stuff Steve D's does. But yeah. They just did something where like they took a a, a personal story of Steve D's and turned I it into something that. trying oh, to paint him so as a bad. pedophile or something. Yeah, I it's thought, so messed up. Bro, I thought that was the one of the most disgusting things I've ever seen in my life. And I was like, dog, y'all typically should have the same core values. But me, like, I wouldn't even be able to be friends with somebody like that. Even after this stuff, it's like the, the, the stuff they're doing to each other, bro, is to me some of the they don't even do it to liberals like that. And I think it is the craziest thing I've, I've witnessed in in my life. It was there was a real rise in in like just look like you said, and I've and I've always said so. We agree on this. There are like weirdos on the left, but there are absolutely Trump did nothing wrong people, which. And there are DeSantis is the next coming people. Yeah. And um, all of it's bad because if, if you can't criticize these people, um, you're going to get more of the same. And the, the DeSantis versus Trump supporter stuff like DeSantis put out the AI, like to make it look like Trump was, uh, you know, embracing Fauci. It's like underhanded. And like you said, that's the kind of stuff you would see after the primaries about yep. The Democrat, yep. not about your own people. Like, that's wild. They don't Trump. need to look. Trump's going to win the nomination unless he's in jail. That's just a fact. Um, the last, like I said, I think he did a, I think he had bad people around him advising him. Like that Jared Kushner guy, I don't think he understood. I, I'm just so salty about like when Trump got banned from Twitter. And I was like, why is this dude not joining Parler or not joining? um gab or something some alt tech new tech because it would make it overnight and he just repeat i found out later all oh, kushner told him not to do that i'm like why what are you doing and by the way i also think it's stupid that he hasn't figured out a way to get back on twitter because he needs it he needs to be tweeting every day so i don't know anyway these are like valid criticisms that aren't even that that are that are not even that harsh and then some people are like bro dude he's got true social 
Yeah, okay. I never said stop tweeting there. I just said he should be on Twitter too. It's like, of course he should be. This is non-controversial statement, but people lose their minds. I'm going to tell you who I think treats this situation the best. And I wish I would have won a battle like this, but I, I'm not a whole my tongue type person. Um, <laughs> who, I, who I like the best about the Trump versus the Santa stuff is, is uh, Benny Johnson. He doesn't pick yeah. size. He, yeah. he, he'll post something positive about Trump if Trump does something positive. He'll post something positive about the Santa if he does something positive. And then he won't engage in any of the back and forth. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's just good business too, to be honest with you. You know, there's um, a story about uh, Rush, uh, Rush Limbaugh famously would refuse to talk about anything till after the primaries because all it did was divide his audience. And I was like, yep. damn, man, that's actually so stupid smart. Like, that's it's like, smart. no, no kidding. What, what, what am I doing? So I stopped engaging yep. in like yep. the Santa's versus Trump stuff because one, it doesn't matter. It's who wins the, the primary. And by sorry, it's going to be Trump, but the, that's just the reality. But the um the but it does nothing. All it does is piss off half of my followers. Bro, so like so, <laughs> yep, yesterday I made the decision to stop after I saw that Steve these things. I said, honestly, bro, I don't even want to engage in this at all. This is like getting like to demonic levels, bro. And I just don't want no parts. And then I thought about it, and it's irrelevant anyway, because in all actuality, as a Christian and how I view where we're at in the time of this country, I don't even care who wins, to be frank with yeah, you. Yeah, a lot and, of people and, feel that way. Yeah, and, and, then, and then not only that, but I probably lost 20% of my fan base in music because I criticized Trump. And then the, the DeSantis people, sometimes they like me, sometimes they don't when I criticize DeSantis. So it's just, it's, it's, it's just all irrelevant. And it's like, bro, I don't. I've never said if you vote for Trump, you're bad. Or you vote for the Senate, you're bad. I don't care who, which one you vote for, because yeah. I don't think any of it matters. Uh, but, but it's it's, it's just overly polarizing to the point where it, it gets demonic. I thought I saw that Steve Beast thing, bro. I said, I am done. And we're we're a year and a half away from the election, and it's already this spicy. Like it's oh, already, yeah, it's um. So I mean, they'll have the debates, Trump. I actually support him not going. There's no reason for him to go there. None of those people are even close to his level. Um, and I'm not like a Trump worshiper. I'm talking about he's got literally nothing to gain by going there. Unless he wanted to use it like he did in the first time around and just ignore the questions and just talk about um, you know, how he's getting screwed over with these indictments and talk about that kind of stuff. He could. But um I got to admit, and I was talking to Sydney about this last night on, we have a show on Thursdays too. Um, like I'm, I'm really trying not to get black pilled about like, you know, the state, the way things are going, but it's getting harder every day, man. Like, oh yeah. And, and, and as far as Trump debating business wise, it it, he has nothing to gain from it. Um, but I do think it's quite rich how a lot of conservatives pretty much bash the crap out of Kerry Lake's opponent. Who, yeah, who, who said true. that? And then they're hyping up Trump saying he shouldn't debate. And Trump is not me. somebody, I, he's not somebody I would expect to be afraid of a debate. But yeah. after hearing people like DeSantis and Vivek, people can say what they want about DeSantis. But when he answers questions about policy, he clearly knows what the crap he's talking about. Yeah, he does. And, and so does and so does Vivek, even though he's not Christian. But um, and yeah. so does Vivek. So I don't know how Trump was fair in a debate with them. I mean, Trump has a bigger and better personality, in my opinion, and he's more entertaining. But it, I, I do agree he has nothing to gain from uh, uh, joining a debate with them. Yeah, I would love, because I'm actually going to be there, I would love. Oh, you're going to be at the to... debate? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> snap. Yeah, so I I uh, would really love for Trump to be there just because you know it's going to be it's, wild. It's <laughs> going to be crazy. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I still rewatch highlights from him and Hillary debates because there's it's so hilarious. <laughs> like, he's just... Man, like that's the thing. Like, uh, DeSantis is not stupid. I think he's done a very good job in Florida. Uh, and I and I think that you know people have their questions about him, just like they have the questions about Trump. Vivek, again, he says a lot of the right things. He put out a video um, the other day, signal boosting. You know, where's this manifesto from Nashville? I mm -hmm. thought that was based. I thought that was cool. Um, I, there's some weird thing. He some people said he like paid to get some WEF connections removed from his wikipedia that's true that's true though that makes me a little like that's weird it's, it's bad enough that you're 
that you're associated, but it's almost worse than that you paid money to have it scrubbed. And, and that's another thing. I can comment on this show because I'm not tweeting right now. That's another yeah. thing I find creepy is how people try to tie DeSantis to George Soros because George Soros said he thinks DeSantis is better than Trump, which wasn't an endorsement at all. But yeah. then Vivek he has actual ties to all these people, and everybody like a lot of a lot of conservatives will just flat out let him slide. But it is true that he did pay for that. Um, that's just that's just a fact. I'm, I don't I'm, let that Michael, slide. My only, I, my only oh, compliment is that he's clearly intelligent. Yes, yes, he is. He's smart, and he um. I think he's had some, I'm not sure where he's at on the second amendment. Um, you know, I know that, oh, I was thinking our, everyone, you know, the thing is there's this contingent of people that will, if you're anti like poke, um, like people like RFK, I think is getting, got a lot of shine for just being like the conservatives are fawning all over him. I'm like, bro, look at what he says about two A, and look what he says. About, like, yeah, he's clearly a Democrat. I was like, what are you conservative, doing? Cause conservative have, have these habits of, Propping up Democrats because they say one thing that we that we love. Like I'm I'm one of the most anti jab people ever, but you will not see me hyping up no a Democrat, bro. I don't <laughs> yeah. understand. That yeah, that is the, that was one of the weirdest things. I kept like watching him. I was like, what are you guys talking about? Like <laughs> he what? No, this guy is not. I would not vote for this guy. People are like, oh, Trump RFK ticket. I'm like, what? What? What are you talking about? <laughs> no. Like, and and then um I, I just but I mean, like, he, it's nothing against him personally. He is who he is. And also, please, not another Kennedy in the White House. Thank you. Like, I'm not trying to get these family dynasties. It was bad enough. We had two Bushes, you know, and tried to have three. Um, uh, but uh, I want to remind people, too, that I'm joined here by Bryson Gray. All of his links are in the description below. He's got a new album coming out every the, and the last week of every month. Yeah, is it starting in August or starting next month? Yep, starting this month on the twenty fifth. My album, my or EP Bible Rap will be out. I only say yeah. albums. I know a lot of like people that are not into music probably don't know the difference between the EP and the album. So seven song EP is pretty long though. Yeah, you know a lot of EPs. Uh, yeah, so sometimes like they're four, five. Yeah, most most are like four yeah. or five. Yeah, yeah. The um, so yeah, I mean it's you know it's almost a full length album. And by the yeah. way, whatever, you know, nowadays you just buy the songs you like anyway. Yeah. Um, fact, nobody even cares. <laughs> nobody cares. Yeah. Yeah. So the, um, what I wanted to, um, you know, I think it this been uh, a good conversation and I think I wanted to get how you're feeling. You mentioned it. I had it on my list just to how you're feeling about, um, Trump, uh, in 2024. And I think you kind of alluded to it. And I, I feel similarly that like, He's, I mean, I, if he wins a nomination, I'm voting for him. That's what I'll, I mean, that's happening. But like, he, he's gotten a little, I don't know. He, he, he's still got that energy. He's still got, you know, the control of room. He's still got all that stuff. But um, I'm less enthusiastic about him in 2024 than I was in 2016. So, that, that's the way I'll put it. So, so for me, there's a lot of things that I didn't know about trump hmm. that i'm starting to figure out more or maybe somebody tried to show me but i was such a trump supporter that i could have possibly yet. ignored it you know what i'm saying yeah but ever since he pushed the 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 the, the jab yeah people I forget that me, <laughs> i guess it gave me clear eye, like more clear eyes and a lot of stuff he does like when you look back he said he was gonna drain the swamp he got in and hired the swamp yep and, and I still think Trump, I'm I'm 32. I think Trump was the best president in my lifetime that I can Me remember since, I, since, I've been, since I've been an adult. Clinton was pretty good, but uh, you were like a little baby. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was, I was a kid. But um, yeah. But with Trump, um, like as a Christian, I just found the video a couple months ago. Somebody showed it to me, and it made me angry because I was wrong. But Trump actually said he doesn't ask God for forgiveness, and I'm like. As that's a person, odd. that's that's asinine. Like that's just yeah, that asinine. And then, of course, with me, he hosts an LGBT galas at Mar-a-Lago, pushing the jab, trying to become less strict on abortion, and try, trying to get the middle, and all of this. And then, even with the DeSantis thing, I don't even like DeSantis. I think him and Trump, like they both passed anti-Semitic policies. They both supported red flag laws in the past. Yeah. But when Trump and DeSantis attack each other, Trump is literally, objectively speaking, attacking him from the left. It's always from point. the it's always from the left, and it's like 
people can't expect me to like liberalism because I clearly am anti-liberal. So, mm. I, you, you know, I can't, and I don't believe, and I, I used to say this too, so for my past self, this would be kind of hypocritical, but I don't believe in a lesser of two evils uh, thing. A lot of people do, and I'm not saying you can't believe in it, but me personally, with my convictions, I've attacked Christian artists like Lecrae for saying a lot less um, than what Trump than what Trump has said. And me, I could, I can't feel. I won't. I, I won't be able to like have a good conscience if I said I'm gonna vote for Trump just because he's better than Biden. Um, because in reality, with the way the country's going, it's getting worse and worse and worse anyway. So I don't really care. Well, that's well. Th that's why I kind of want him to debate. I kind of want to hear him again, like talk about where he's at on certain policies. Um, and then to, to clarify, he never wanted to mandate the jab, as far as I understand. He pushed well, he, it. He didn't, but he, he called himself the father of it. And, and yeah. my, my well, problem with strong. the jab, my problem with the jab is not even in, like I don't care about mandates. Mandates wasn't what conservatives were saying or bringing up in the beginning. I care because I think the jab is a was a negative thing, and I do believe people um, were harmed from it. How many? I don't think we'll ever know. And the fact that he still doesn't admit that it had, it, bro, he went, I, I heard him on Fox News. He said the only reason conservatives didn't get the jab is because Joe Biden was president. He said, if I was president, I would have just told people to get the jab and everybody would have got it. I'm like, Ooh. so you think this is a cult? Like, and, and yeah. you know, so it, it's the, it's, and stuff like that, that a lot of people just flat out ignore. It, 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 it don't, it don't sit right with me. And everybody say, oh, Trump didn't know the same way we didn't know. And, Okay, if the president of the United States is just as ignorant as a as a, as me and you, then that's that's a bigger problem. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you rely on. I give him a, a little bit of leeway. I'm I'm probably more forgiving about it than maybe you are in terms of the jab because I'm I'm thinking like everyone around. He's not a doctor, so I feel like oh, everyone around him is telling him this stuff. But but he used to be not. He never was anti-vax, but Trump. Bro, one of the biggest moments in the in the debates in 2015 was him and Ben Carson because they were getting close, and uh, the moderator tried to split them up by bringing up the jab because Trump used to be he Trump was the most famous vaccine critic. Mm -hmm. He 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 said things about the jab that I'm saying now we, in 2013. So yeah, it's not that's true. It's, it's, so I can't the reason it's not that I don't forgive him is that. It doesn't make any sense. It's not consistent with his personality. It's not consistent with things that he said in the past. This is like I'd like him just... to own it. I would like him to own it. I know he never will because that's not his personality. Yeah, yeah, it's not his personality, but yeah. But like, I don't. I feel like that would go a long way for he's like you know if he addresses it, and you know all he'd have to say is like, look, I mean, if I knew now what I knew then, things would be different. Boom. And, you know, and that's Simple. all you gotta say. Yeah, like, and and that's all you got to say. And I think that that would go miles. He did do some good things. He did. Uh, he did give you the Supreme Court that overturned Roe v. Wade, which was pretty based. He uh, he, he, he he gave two, but I, I I'm I, as a person I pay attention to politics. I remember conservatives was mad at um Amy Comey Barrett. Uh, yeah, they after, were. After Kim got her, and you know what I'm saying. So I'm not saying she didn't do anything good, but the the most consistent person on the Supreme Court was somebody that was appointed by George Bush, I believe, Clarence Thomas. Uh, yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, Clarence, please not, please stay healthy, Clarence. Like he's had, <laughs> he's had so many like great takes, um, principled takes that like God, I don't want to lose them, and. Um, you know, at least wait till there's a Republican in office to retire, please. Yeah, that's please. what they did with RGB. You know, she, yeah. She, yeah. you know, she, she's like trying to, you know, uh, stay. They stay. That's the other thing. Uh, fun topic. And then there's a couple of questions from chat I was going to ask you, and then I'll let you Any get on with your day. Um, but uh, like, I think one thing everyone can agree on, is, as we've seen uh, on display this year more than ever before, is. Uh, I'm I'm looking to hear what Trump might have to say or other candidates might have to say about term limits. This mm. this thing where we've got freaking the turtle man stroking out on live TV. You got Maxine Waters is in a freaking wheelchair from shingles. You got vodka knockers, Nancy Pelosi. Like uh, you got Diane Feinstein, who's a thousand years old. Get what the hell do what the heck do these people? How can they honestly like 
they don't know what's going on. They have no idea. They're, 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 and they're control. I mean, they have a lot of control. I'm not even, I'm saying Democrat and Republican. When you're like 90 years old, bro, you're getting sunsetted. Like that's, that's it. You're out. It should be like 80 probably. Yeah. You know? I, 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 I would like to hear what uh, the candidates will think about term limits. Cause that's an interesting topic. I might sort of split on it. Um, but I definitely don't think you should be in office being like 85, bro. I mean, I, I don't understand how you can benefit this country that way. Yeah. I just don't think you ate at all. Like you, you, and, um, you say like, okay, what is their job? Right. Their job is to represent their constituents. Yep. You're a hundred years old. You don't know what the hell they're, they're talking about. These people don't know what TikTok is. They don't know like what, um, what capping is. They don't no. know <laughs> like, any of this stuff. And they're, and they're like, I represent you. Like, no, you don't. You represent my dead great grandfather. Like that's, <laughs> that's who you know about. That's the, you know, these people, and they're all so rich. Oh, they're all so scummy. Okay. Let's move to that. It's a couple yeah. question. Um, Baz Freeman says, um, oh, these are just some comments. J music journalism is people who can't write writing for people who can't read about people who can't play. Still true. That's a, yeah, that's from Zappa. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. <laughs> They had um they did a really cool documentary about uh, Zappa, uh, like two or three years ago. If people haven't seen it, it's worth a watch. It's very it's very cool. Um, Jack Decker says, Bryson, what do you think of the Allegiant Stadium in L.A.? Uh, do you want to perform at it, and would you? The Allegiant Stadium in L.A. I've never heard of it. Yeah, is that the? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, not L.A. Las Vegas. Never heard of it either. It must be the Oakland. Where their football team plays, I'm sure he would. Like <laughs> hundred thousand people, yeah. Oh, um, I, I would love to. I would love to give my message out to hundred thousand people. <clears throat> yeah, that is the brand new uh, Las Vegas uh, stadium. Yeah, it looks it oh. looks great. I've never so, even been to Las Vegas. I've been once, and it basically smells like farts and sadness. It is not. I don't <laughs> get this. Like people keep go to Vegas, bro. Go to Vegas. I went to Vegas. <laughs> And I was like, it's all a bunch of old people on re with oxygen tanks farting up the hallways after eating buffets. That's all it is. And, and like overpriced liquor. And I just, <laughs> it was not fun. I, I was like, I was there for like two days and I was like, this is dumb. I, what is this? I stayed in my hotel one day, like the all day, just watching TV. Cause I'm like, this city is not for me. Like, I just don't get it. <laughs> The um, I got so bored. I went to like a dance show that was at the hotel, like uh, <laughs> a group, and it was uh, men. It was uh, the uh, uh down, thunder from down under. I was like, oh, what's this? And I went in there. I was like, oh, it's it's like Chippendales. And I was like, okay, well, maybe I'll just go back up to my hotel room. But it was just, it was not, it was not for me. Uh, Car Carbonated Bear says lost all respect for the Offspring when they wouldn't let the drummer go on tour with them. Yeah, and that's weird too. That was so because he was uh didn't get the jab. Oh, that's crazy. Um, yeah. And they and were singing, you got to get poked and you got to keep them separated. Oh, yeah, that was cringe. All the people that came out and did my all time favorite uh, lockdown Hollywood out of touch videos, of course. Um, the all the Hollywood people singing um, Imagine by the Beatles. Oh, yeah. And it was the I mean, I, I, I mean, like I not figuratively literally fell out of my chair laughing when I saw that video and I like ran upstairs to my studio. I'm like, man, I'm going to make some money <laughs> off this. Like these people have no idea. <laughs> the, uh, like once you, once you have a certain amount of money in the bank, I don't know, 5 million, you're no longer a normal person. You can't understand. I don't care. And it's almost like, I'm not blaming you for it, but when you got 5 million bucks in, you don't even think about the price of gas. You don't even think about the price of groceries. You don't even think about the uh, electric bill going up, or you don't think about this stuff that dominates, you know, people in this country who are living paycheck to paycheck, you know, which is, you know, 30, 40% of people or whatever it is. Um, Planet Chance says, if Trump isn't there, maybe we can act, maybe we can actually hear DeSantis and Vivek on issues other than Trump. That's true. And I thought Trump had a really baller statement about that. He said something like, uh, yeah, it'd be a great opportunity to audition to be my VP. <laughs> <laughs> and I will say a debate between Vivek and DeSantis. I don't know how much they disagree on, but a debate between them would be, I, I think that'd be a, a pretty, at least a B level, like a high level, a, a high level debate. I like to, I would like to say that. Yeah. Problem is like, you're a nerd 
and like that won't appeal to people want to see like fireworks oh, yeah. it, yeah. it, it would be entertaining but for me you know i'm like i'm, I'm sort of a nurse i'm like yeah. yo <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i want trump to go in there and like call someone a fat pig like that's yeah like, uh, I, that's more entertaining <laughs> I, I would accept that too but yeah. i also like to see a high level like you know yeah actual adults in the room a policy yeah. talk <laughs> yeah yeah the uh planet change is a shout out from north carolina i've been writing songs but finding places that aren't woke to hook up with others is hard. Nearly impossible. Yeah. You, maybe you're, you're talking about finding um, bandmates. I mean, why not online? I mean, uh, remember. Yeah, the, uh, yeah that's the, what you got to do. I remember it was such a mind-blowing experience when um, the, the lead singer from, uh, not the Get Up Kids, um, the, uh, the band The Postal Service. Like this is like they they just created a great record and it was like one dude in Australia and one dude in America and they just sent tracks back and forth they never even met and um like you can do that kind of stuff uh now that you never could before and with high speed internet like you can have practically latency free jam sessions and and practice and stuff like that so I would yeah I would do that maybe there's um and also you know be open to playing music with a woke person they can be woke and not be garbage. Like, um, well, eh, that's probably rare, <laughs> but like, uh, I mean, I just think like I, I played in a band with, you know, two vegans, uh, oh. like and, and a democratic socialist for like 10 years. And, um, it was never an issue. We just didn't talk. We just played music, you know, like yeah. we didn't, you know, um, I noticed over the years, they've both unfollowed me on social media, which <laughs> I, I understand. Um, Cam says, fine sign signing over power of attorney to her daughter and is staying in congress that's so nuts she's like a thousand years she's in her 90s or something isn't she <laughs> she's what in the hell is happening like these people oh man side note did you see that anecdote and i'll i'll, I'll wrap up here too but did you see um was it al sharpton he made some oh. comment like imagine uh people overthrowing oh, the government Madison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk, 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 so talking about the family overthrowing the government, and it's like, okay, are you like, are you slow? Yeah. Like, open a history book, my friend. Like, just that's one, how this country like, exists. The, the most basic, like, history book. Matter of fact, this, yeah, like you said, it's the only reason America resists, I mean, exists. <laughs> yeah, we'll yeah be, that was. We'll still be Great Britain. I can't wait for him to die too, peacefully and old. But I think guys like Al Sharpton and uh, like the race race grifters. I can't, I can't, I can't do it. Like his entire job is to make white and black people hate each other. In my opinion, like I just, I, I don't know. I don't, yeah. uh, right I just, right yeah. Like, and not just him. Like, obviously there's a lot in the leftist media that, that, that does that. Al too. Sarpton, Jesse Jackson. There's, there's, there, there are many. Of yeah. Them. Yeah. I can't, they're not good for, for relations. Like, uh, I feel like if you watch TV, like in, like, race relationships are as bad as they've ever been if i if i like believe yeah, what... it, it pays to the internet it's, it's just like how you say about the blue-haired people in real life though i, I go i go out I, I travel a lot it's not like that in real life but if you look at the internet we just yeah. hate each other <laughs> yeah that, that's all manufactured i've never had an issue with any like it's usually like an, an actual issue it's like uh like uh maybe a, a, an argument or disagreement but it's never been like they it's portrayed on the internet like it's yeah you, yeah. you also get a lot of those commentators that uh, you know I won't mention names but they go they uh their entire existence is posting um one particular group of people doing bad things all the time oh yeah because, you mean oh yeah we, we won't have to say their names that's all they do and if you actually pay attention they're uh, old they do videos it. too and they're oh, yeah. oh it's, mo it's the majority are old videos and then what makes the old videos confound in a lot of the viewers minds is if they post one that's new yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yep. 20 videos straight, one new, and that just confirms all the old ones, too. And it's like, and it's like, and then they post them every day at the same time. I don't know if they still yeah. do. I had to unfollow them because like it's so weird, but they'll post yeah. them every day at the same time. It's like, who are you paying to find these freaking videos? A yeah, lot of them right. Come from world star, though. Yep, a lot of world star, and uh, it's just, yeah, it's like manufactured, you know, like, yeah, yeah. okay, people do bad things. Uh, it's you know it's it's uh usually inner city videos where you yep. have all kinds of violence and it's not really because of the race it's the circumstance and other things um it's 100 percent not because of that but like the implication 
you know like the the implication is uh so so I, I did a space about this right and i'm like bro i'm one of the least pro-black people ever bro. i can't even stand the pro-black conservatives bro i said yeah. but objectivity is objectivity i said this is not real life so this lady got on she said this, ha this happened to me I said, all right explain it to me because what i noticed about humans is they'll attribute something that's the, that's, that had nothing to do with what they claim, but they'll think about it, they'll say it anyway. So I said, explain to me the events that happened where you got attacked because just because you was white. She said she was at a, a, a anti-mandate event. Yeah. And she said Black Lives Matter came and was throwing stuff at them, calling them all types of names. And I said, you said this is a political thing, right? I, yeah. I, I, she said, yeah. I was like, so was it your ideology or your race? Because your race. I said, so let me ask you a question. Was there black people with you? It's like, yeah, there's Hispanics with me too. Oh, I'm yeah. like, okay, okay. And I said, I said, was there white people with BLM? It's like, yeah, half of them were white. I said, were the black people getting stuff thrown on them too? It's like, <laughs> yeah. I said, how much, it, can I serve it up any easier for you? <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, come on. Like, bro, this, but was but when they see so many of these videos, if you watch a lot of these people on the internet, they'll say, This has happened. There's too many videos. They'll say the videos is the evidence. So then they'll have to find something in their life, the closest thing they can find to fit it, because they think it's a reality. And it's like the scariest thing. I was, it's like, it's so scary, bro. Yeah, it's very, I, I started blocking people that like, uh, would just exclusively post those videos. Cause of course they go viral. And then like, um, it's just, it's just really just cultivates division and, and dissent. And, uh, it's part of the reason I spend a little less time on Twitter now. And I, I kind of burned a few bridges there. Cause I was like, I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing, bro. I see what yeah. you're doing. I know what you're doing. And look, racist people exist. And I also do not believe that being racist is exclusive to white people. Uh, and they exist. I'm not saying they don't. But the, in the slant or the deluge of a particular type of video seems to over-exaggerate or over-represent oh, um, reality. But, but to be clear, it happens on... If anybody... <clears throat> I hate calling it this, but if anybody immerse themselves in black twitter um it's poisonous but it, do it if you wish for study purposes they do this every day every day there's a new article a new video yeah. a new sum of some white person being racist and they'll say things like make sure y'all strap up these people out to kill us and out to get us it's quite literally the same exact thing um that's a good point yeah, i don't have the password to get into black twitter <laughs> but i have seen I have seen some of the posts and you're right. And it goes just as viral. It's just so yes. wild. Like it never Ma comes across my timeline, but they'll have 50,000 likes on Bro, some stupid Karen. Viral. Yeah. Some stupid Karen being stupid. And, um, and, uh, like, yeah, yeah, you're right. So, uh, with that, um, I'm very, very thankful for your time, Bryson. I, I, I thought it was a great conversation. Awesome combo. Bro. Um, the uh all of his links are in the description but uh if you're watching this on youtube later or if you're in the stream now make sure you go follow him and uh be, be on the lookout check out some of his music now and if it's your kind of thing then be on the lookout for uh you know five new records in the next <laughs> you know four <laughs> new records of the next four months or something yeah yeah and uh, i really appreciate you uh coming on and uh, i wish you all the best and um don't forget to call your your brother or your cousin uh My brother, it's, it's my brother's birthday. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm calling right now. I get off here. All right, man. Thank you so much, and have yeah. a great weekend. Thank, thank you for having me on, bro.